welcome to Dance Mama In Conversation. I have got a fantastic talk for you coming forth, I'm no doubt, with the wonderful Kate Tideman, who is actually featuring in our film at the moment uh, with a few other Dance Mamas. And I'm so excited to get the chance to probe further and have a little talk with her about her experience as a performer, dancing, acting, singing, and all the movement direction and, and choreography. And if you're not familiar with Kate's amazing career, it spans the West End and also into films with Kenneth Branagh. So Kate, just tell us a little bit about your journey into parenthood and how that sort of dovetailed with career. Yeah, so... I, my husband and I, we've been together a long, long time, 18 years this year. Okay. Uh, and we, yeah, I think we, we spent, I mean, we're both, we both come from very similar backgrounds and it's a total coincidence. We were both ballet dancers originally and then became more singers and then became more actors and, and kind of do, do a bit of everything. And we, we were luckily busy in our 20s do, working a lot and and I think and we got married and it was never massively on the cards to become parents I don't think either of us desperately felt that need at that point you know and then sort of hit 30 and everybody starts to talk about it and you feel the pressure and and still neither of us were were massively sort of getting the feelings you know and then and then we just felt ourselves starting to talk about it more and more and notice people with children and that and you know and it just it was like part of our conversation every day and we got to a point i think it was about 34 or 33 and we just went oh my gosh we can't stop talking about it we've got to do it and then suddenly we were like oh we're desperate for a child <laughs> it like just happened it was amazing um, and we, unfortunately we lost one. So that was a bit, a bit of a tricky time. Um, especially cause I was performing at the time and it was, it was quite difficult. Um, but luckily we got pregnant again fairly quickly after that. And now we have a 60 year old, beautiful, healthy son called Farley. Yeah. How, how gorgeous. And when you were pregnant with Farley, were were you performing then and and working then or? Yes, yes. Actually, I was doing I was doing a musical called Love Me Tender, a um, Elvis Presley musical, and I was on tour on a UK tour. And actually, I found out I got pregnant. I found out in like the second week of rehearsal, <laughs> and. I was like, oh, you know, you, you kind of don't really want to tell people, especially because we'd had a, um, you know, a loss before. I was a bit like, oh, I don't really want to tell anyone. And and they were creating my role on me. And it, luckily it was more of an acting, singing role. But they were like, oh, you're, you're a dancer as well, aren't you? Let's do this. Let's do that. Let's have you jump off the balcony and do this. And I was thinking, oh, not sure I should be doing it. So I kind of, I managed to wangle my way out of anything too extreme. And yeah, so that was a seven month contract. And I told them, obviously, after, after a couple of months when I sort of felt comfortable to. And um they made all the all the adjustments that needed to happen and I actually was able to completely finish the contract which so it was beautiful so I really I spent most of my pregnancy performing and it was it was so lovely I think also it was such an uplifting show and a feel-good show and it was a beautiful company of, of actors and dancers and singers and and all that kept happening is my dress that they added like a frill, a peplum thing, and it just kept getting bigger and bigger, you know? Um, but yeah, it was, I honestly, it was the best thing that could have happened to me because I, because I was busy yes. and I was doing what I love doing. And I was very happy in that company and with that show took my mind off of maybe had I been sat at home, I may have been worrying with what happened to us before. So 
it was really the best thing. And the fact that I was able to finish the contract, didn't have a day off, didn't have a sick day. I was so healthy. It was really wonderful. And then I got a couple of months to chill out afterwards and get and, ready. And it's so brilliant to hear that because that is exactly the experience we, we want people to have. And it's so heartening to hear that you were supported through that yeah. process and all like you say those adjustments it's totally possible isn't it yeah oh yeah through that po process in spite of the rigorous demands that there are on tour and traveling and having to hit the same level of ex excellence night after night and, and show after show but be really nurturing and supportive of that person going through those physical and psychological changes can't get the words out today psychological changes that um you know as they're going along through pregnancy and I think that's absolutely fantastic were were there any kind of um kind of extra things they might have done logistically like did they give you space to have a nap or, or <laughs> that kind of stuff or uh, they did uh, honestly they were wonderful they did they would have done anything I asked for, you know, they, they were brilliant. But as what sort of started happening is they would give me whatever theatre we were in that week, they would give me the dressing room the closest to the stage, you know, so I didn't have to keep going upstairs or down, you know. I mean, I was super fit, so I would have been fine to do it, but it was lovely. So they, they did that and they, they what did they do? do they kind of every every theater we went into they obviously they did a risk assessment and they and they um they just checked that i was comfortable with everything they kept letting out my costumes and making me look lovely i, I mean it's funny because i started i was playing sort of like a sort of sexy secretary type you know and i started in a skimpy dress and then it just kind of <laughs> got me and if you lifted up the frill i had a huge stomach but you couldn't see it with the frill no, it was just brilliant. And I think they they were so good. They let me, um, at one point I felt like I had to change my shoes and they let me wear more of a, more of a comfortable shoe, which, you know, helped. But I, I was fit and healthy and didn't really require much. I just think it was, it was really exciting for the company. Yeah. They all, you know, making that announcement after warm up one day before the show, nobody expected it. No, you know, I think I just pulled out a little photo of my scan and it it was like the company baby, you know, they they threw me a massive um, baby shower and it was just lovely, really. And, and how it absolutely should be. And and it, again, like I say, it's so heartening to hear that all of those kind of adaptations were, were being thought about and also the close relationship you must have had with the company manager and, and creatives and the rest of the cast so you felt able to speak up for those needs and know that it, they were going to be supported and have a good response yeah because very often most people going through a similar experience in our industry don't necessarily feel they have that power to yeah. do that and, a, and a really cautious and, and worried and then I think that's when it starts to lead to having real challenges and also it sounds to me that perhaps maybe somebody in the creative or management team was a parent or had had that experience themselves to help anticipate what you might need do you know whether that was the case or or just they're extraordinarily brilliantly empathetic and fantastic <laughs> I do know that there there were some parents on the on the creative team. I can't remember if the director was a parent or not, but um but we had a, a female director and she just was she was just I can't I don't know actually if she if she's a parent or not, but she was just so understanding straight away, you know. Now, you know, we we live in a very different world than we did even seven years ago. Yeah. And I think if it were now, I would probably have mentioned it straight away, yeah. you know, in rehearsals and said, look, it's very early days, but I've just found out I'm pregnant and 
Uh, so while, when you're creating the number on me or this, can we, should we just have a chat about that in terms of lifts, in terms of, you know, all of this? And and having having had a um, a difficult experience with the first pregnancy, I, I, I was very... I was very aware that I wanted to really be careful. I think something in you just kind of, not that I wasn't the first time, but you, you just go, I can't lose this one. I don't don't want to go through that again. And, um, I think luckily I managed to make everything feel safe and do what I wanted to do and all of that. But I think if it were now, I would have spoken up about it. I guess at the time I, it wasn't as easy before. You know, it wasn't, and I think I maybe would have, well, I know the reason I didn't say it is that I felt that maybe they might have thought, well, that's bad timing. You know, you've just started this job. And, you know, I think especially as a dancer, I mean, I I wasn't a dancer in that particular job, but when you've grown up as a dancer and you're, you're told what to do and you're, you know, and you, and you, do everything and you you don't want to upset anyone and you want them to do it and I and I think that I was probably a little nervous that they would be a bit upset with me maybe that I'd chosen this time or but as you know you don't choose when you get pregnant <laughs> it, it just kind of happens and but now I wouldn't I feel like the world has changed and I wouldn't in any way worry about that now yeah and and they wouldn't have worried about that. I just felt maybe I shouldn't say right now because we've just started rehearsals and they're going to panic and they're going to think, do they need to replace me and the, the, all of this, you know, which wouldn't have been the case, but you don't know that at the time. And, yeah, I, I, and and I think, yeah, unfortunately for, for some people that, that has been their experience and then that does kind of perpetuate that and it, it's just so brilliant to, to hear a really good... <laughs> good yeah story of of how, how you were supported it's just just brilliant and I, I guess a comedy question is does your son now have a connection to Elvis music <laughs> <laughs> uh, not particularly my son is the most untheatrical person that exists at this point in time not really interested likes a bit of acting not really interested in singing or dancing or anything you know it's quite it's quite odd I know and I I do I sometimes I play a bit of Elvis and I'm like this is what you would have heard over and over again every night he's like oh yeah (laughs) (laughs) and then suddenly behind your back just you know whips out yeah probably yeah, I have heard him. I have heard him talk to people and go, oh, yeah, my mum. So he does, he does, you know. <laughs> As he should. Yeah, and absolutely. Kind of afterwards, and I, in my experience, I felt this was where there was a complete, <laughs> sounded quite negative this morning, it's the storm outside, kind of abyss of, like, nothingness in terms of support postnatally. And... It'd just be interesting to hear what your experience was of 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 that phase and then returning to work and yeah it's funny so so for me sort of leading up to giving birth i just felt i had so much support from where i was working from doctors and nurses everything um and then i had the baby <laughs> and then it all disappeared. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, we, we had quite a tricky, uh, quite tricky labour as well, and uh, we had a miracle. It's a miracle that my son is alive. Um, he was born with uh, by emergency C-section, but he he had a true knot in his cord. Um, yeah, they call it a true knot, where he must have swum through at some point. So as he was trying to come out, the knot was tightening and stay. It was a, it was really um, very tricky. Uh, but my body was, I won't go into the huge labour story, but it is, it is a miracle. It's like my body just wouldn't dilate the last half centimetre. It's like my body was not letting him out. Uh, it was nothing to do with the knot. My body just was stopping and then we try it. Uh, anyway, he, they eventually just said he's losing oxygen. We've got to get him out. And because had he been born natu- the natural way, it's not a very good survival rate at all. So, so it was all a little traumatic. And, um, but 
What I found really tricky, and I know this isn't to do with work, but but I just found really tricky in terms of that support that that you know i was kind of flung back into a ward with six other women who'd had a two-hour birth or a three hour, you know everything easy and i'd been there for five days and i'd had a c-section and i couldn't sit up and, and i was expected to do everything the same as as the woman next to me who was on her you know maybe her second child and had a, a three-hour labor and was about to go home and i was i, I can't even stand up you know what uh, so I, that i found really tricky so um so that for me was the beginning of okay this is now reality i've had this this dream of a pregnancy whilst playing a beautiful role in a lovely music doing all of this and and even the birth was even though on paper it was traumatic i didn't find it traumatic um i, I still enjoyed it and and then you're kind of everybody everybody goes away and yeah I, f I found that really quite difficult and and then because being a dancer you know it's quite the idea that your kind of stomach's sawn in half it, it was quite a shock I think to, to me and I mean obviously I knew that could happen and it would happen but it's like you kind of do everything you can before to prepare yourself. I did quite a lot. I was physical, obviously, with the show during my pregnancy. And then when I finished the show, I did I did a lot of um, pregnancy exercise and lo lovely things, you know, to make sure my body, I was looking after myself and all of that, and to hopefully help recovery afterwards. Um, and then you have a C-section and it all goes down the drain. <laughs> Yeah, it obviously took longer to recover physically, but in terms of work, I, looking back now, it was probably a dreadful idea, but I got offered a job whilst I was still pregnant, right at the end of my pregnancy. I got offered a play uh, with Kenneth Branagh, the entertainer um, in London. It was part of a series of, of plays that, that he did. And my husband was in the first play of the season. And then this was to be in the last play of the season. Uh, so my son was born during the first play, which was, so we were all kind of linked. And, and they offered me the job. And I just, you know, I hadn't had the baby. So I was, of course, it's in six months. Of course, that'll be fine by then. Um, it's to play a showgirl. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> six months time that'll be that'll be a piece of cake and then I had the baby <laughs> I was like counting down the months going oh my gosh you know I've got to I've got to get into a showgirl outfit in a few months time and and it wasn't a whole lot of dancing it, it was it was sort of more acting than anything else but I still I still had to do a bit of dancing and being not you know not a not a whole load of clothes. <laughs> and so, I don't know, in a way it, it was good because I had something to focus on. Like, yeah, I have to get back into shape. I have six months-ish from when the baby was born and um, to get back into shape and uh, see how that goes. And that part of it was all right, but I think mentally I found it, I found it very, very difficult to leave him at six months and go to rehearsal. Yeah, yeah. And was he able to come with you for, for some of it or, or not, really, not really? No, no. Again, now I would say, hey, I'm breastfeeding. I need to bring my child in, uh, one, you know, or whatever, or I need to go and pump or I need to do these things. But at the time, I didn't feel... I didn't feel like I could do that, if I'm honest. And that's nothing um, to do with the company because had I asked, they would have said, absolutely fine, no problem. I just didn't feel comfortable doing that. But I would now, but now I'm older and I don't, I'm not as worried, I guess. No, so I sort of felt well, I, I have to have stopped breastfeeding by then because I can't be in rehearsal and then I have to, I have to sort of sort out 
child care and all of that because we don't have any family or anything so it's so it's quite tricky yeah um, again that is quite a common theme that we'll have pursued a vocational career moved from our primary yeah family, um and then settled probably near london or one of the main kind of hubs um where there's activity going on for, yeah for artists um, yeah and then absolutely your kind of, your social capital is is far reduced and it's it's so tough and it's so I, tough i found myself particularly in terms of um that po- postnatally the uh, which is absolutely driving everything that we're doing now is not having the specific information to really support you in terms of that rehabilitation yeah for the purposes of what you're then going to be using your body for and yeah I'm hoping that my PhD will start to fill a bit of a gap. I know there's other colleagues who are working in a similar way or, or to try and get, get more guidelines and information out there because the, the only thing you're sort of told is sort of go with your instinct generally. There is a, a fact sheet with One Dance UK and now there's a little bit of support in a dance science textbook. But yeah. <laughs> unless you kind of know they're there or it's put in, animated in a slightly more digestible way um it's, it's, it's very very difficult and, and interesting you say you sort of start starting in in france with your career and your life <coughs> we know there you have 12 weeks of rehabilitation postnatally as standard yeah in the uk you have nothing unless they think there's a problem and the same with any injury that you sustain uh, as an artist or in mm. the sector the nuanced understanding of your general practitioner or physio is not that it's the knowledge is not that it's super limited of course it is mm. what we're doing is really really niche but then conversely really unhelpful <laughs> So I, I remember when they're about to stick the spinal block in or whatever. I remember just going, "I'm a dancer. I'm a dancer. Be careful." Yeah, I mean, it's it's funny you say that because they said curve your back. So me with you know contemporary dance, cutting of yeah. C's, cutting of C's. And I was like, "Oh my god, I can't switch this off. It's so frustrating." But it's it's so inbuilt. And and similarly, I I had my birth was episiotomy forceps. Wow. So, similarly again a bit of a rush emergency job but even at that point I felt there's something different about how we've been conditioned mentally and physically to push through yeah where you don't think that you know I didn't see it as a trauma until somebody said on the way out I'm sorry you've had a traumatic time yeah me too yeah what <laughs> yeah and and then you start of kind of go into free fall and yeah. see the way to I view skiing. <laughs> I normally like I'm used to having so much control over my body to then be doing something totally different where my body just doesn't seem to be operating as yeah. kind of efficiently. It's really it's really off off putting. And obviously I, I say the skiing thing rightly, but in terms of then reorientating yourself in a postnatal body is mm wildly different and up until this moment in time where we're really advocating for a positive view of it also seen as quite negative of you're broken and that what you're yeah. not doing that again and trying to get over all of that kind of noise yeah to actually it is possible but yeah as you say it, it, in your your story it is again relying on so much personal resilience and tenacity to get to that space whereas what we really want is this level of support that you had through pregnancy oh my gosh yeah post postnatally um, and 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 i'd say you do you do get it if you're lucky to meet one individual here and there you know like like i did i had an old gp and then she retired and it was such a shame because she just got it you know all throughout my pregnancy, because I was on tour, she'd be like, okay, when can you do this? Or I'm going to phone someone I know up in Manchester when you're in Manchester and they'll check you out. And the, you know, it was just brilliant compared to sort of who, who, you know, who I had afterwards, which it was like, no, if you can't make, if you can't make this time, then you can't get your scan and you can't do things. Like, 
I'm on tour. I'm an actor. Yeah. I can't get back from Glasgow to make this date. Like, you have, please try and accommodate me. It's not like I walk. It's not like I work in an office down the road. You know, it's is different. But it's like, there are there were certain individuals that were excellent. But overall, yeah, they don't they don't get. I mean, how amazing would it have been if you know you have the baby and then when someone can come around and talk to you and just go, okay, I know you're a dancer, so you know we're going to support you. Feel like anything? How's your body doing? Or what support would you need? I mean, I definitely felt things also this might be relatable for some people like I really struggled uh, breastfeeding mm. and it kind of wasn't working very easily for me and you know perceive because you know, they all come round and you get six different people going it's fine it's fine and meanwhile after you feel like you're starving your baby when they haven't ate anything for a week and and I got a really bad back and I still have it to this day, sort of upper back because of the strain of kind of leaning forward and trying all the different way and with the stress of it and, yeah. you know, just kind of, I, I needed physiotherapy in, at that point and I, and I do. And that it's funny when I talk to a physio now, I go, that's from, that's from people telling me I had to breastfeed. And that's from the stress of trying to do that for 10 weeks and pushing my body to, to positions and forcing it to happen, you, you know, because they said, this is what you have to do for your child. This is the best thing. And I agree that that was coming from a nice place, but physically I damaged my body <laughs> trying to do that. And yeah, you know, it never, it's never fully recovered. The strain I kind of put, it sounds, it sounds small, but it's, it's a big thing I deal with in my upper back that has never recovered from those first few months. Yeah. And I feel like had they understood that actually, you know, us as dancers, I mean, we put up with pain, we put up, we push through, like you say, we do all of that. And if after 10 weeks, I'm telling you that this is not happening, you know, this is not working and this is hurting and what you're telling me to do, I can't keep doing, you know, yeah. I kind of need to listen to me because I, I do know my body. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's one thing I know, it's when my body hurts or if it's good or bad. And, and it's funny as well, isn't it? When you start kind of saying, oh, my deltoid or I know it's my latimus dorsi and stuff. Yeah. And sometimes you'll get a reaction of like, oh, brilliant, they know more, but then they might come up with even more medical terms that yeah. I don't know. Or there's a kind of a, are you telling me how to do my job? Yes, that's what I was met with more, yeah. Which yeah. really frustrating because we do have a knowledge of our body. Yes, it's not exactly the same in a medical way, but there's a, a, a knowledge there of what's going on. And, and absolutely in terms of upper back, the same lifting and all of that yeah, against the osteopath on wednesday <laughs> yeah um, so absolutely all the lifting all the carrying getting you know tight here short in the hip yeah it's been sitting down being sedentary so try yeah. to find ways of releasing all of that yeah well, the, the stress that manifests there as you say is it, so specific and um yeah some these are some of the key kind of um uh, body issues that hopefully I'm going to be able, able to look at and then we can hopefully start start getting some answers and get um some support in much much earlier yeah we're really on the front line of it yeah but that's it also it's like I, I think that also when you have that baby is you don't really think about yourself do you as well it, it's all about that that baby and it's all about keeping this precious little things safe and you you know for me just eating went out the window and 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 looking after myself just it just didn't happen you know it was and now looking back like okay well that's why I got ill there and all, that's why that happened and it's even even to this day I kind of have to really go okay I need to I need to make sure I eat well. I need to make sure I exercise and look after my body. And but I mean, it's what you do as a as a mother, as a parent, isn't it? You you put your kids first, and that's normal. 
but if you can't function then you're not going to be a great parent absolutely and now he's a little bit older the kind of the challenges shift into another year and i'm sure they will until they're you know 40 living at home i don't know (laughs) in my case um but um in terms of the logistics with both of you working in the sector how has that sort of operated well for for one because we we don't have any family support really we decided that we would we would take it in turns to work as much as possible and luckily that's kind of how things happened naturally sort of Stu would get an offer and would go okay you accept that and you do that and then and then luckily kind of it kind of almost worked alternating who who would work um obviously that was a big drop in income because we would both work at the same time before that so um but we were we we knew that would happen and then there were sometimes crossovers of a few weeks here and there where one of my jobs would go into his job or something and we were able at the time to have uh sort of like my niece who's only 10 years younger than me at the time she was free and single and in between jobs so she we were able to pay her and she came and lived with us for a few weeks or things like that we we were able to do it like that up until now that's how we've kind of managed um it's just been obviously your career takes a hit because i don't want to go on tour i don't I, I don't really want to work away. I don't want to do long, long contracts anymore. So we're we're much more picky with what we do. Um, so we kind of we do the jobs that feel okay and fit in with Farley and each other, and then we uh, we do quite a lot of teaching and coaching in the meantime. You know, so it's but it's all. I mean, it's worked well. It's it's not been easy. You know, I think I would love to see the theatre and the arts kind of open up for helping parents a little bit more when there's when there's a lack of support at at home, really, with childcare. It's I mean, you know, I think that, like I said before, I think now I'm happy to say to my agent, can't get any childcare, you know, or I'm going to have to bring my son into the audition because they've got. Like, I'm happy to do that now, but it's not. It's not ideal. <laughs> really difficult, and I. It's there's a few things there in that you've got, kind of, we're different in that we kind of need to do our work. It's so much part of our, our identity. We are artists. It's. It, the six weeks after I had Callie was probably the longest where I wasn't in a studio or working on a project either physically or administratively and felt completely alien and fish out of water even just that's a tiny relatively tiny pocket of time until I could get in and do some mum and baby pilates or something yeah like that really strange and childcare is is a huge one yeah our working pattern whether we're on or off stage because the on stage dictates most things <laughs> yeah it's really antisocial and ad hoc and trying to find somebody with that flexibility of course is really difficult unless you're <laughs> unless usually you're related to them and yeah that then absolutely influences your choices and that's when I start to get cross because <laughs> The whole system is then rigged in a way that influences the choices that you're having to make and where your your career can go purely based on that. And and I think that works across most working parents, which has been a positive of the pandemic, has actually highlighted that around the lockdowns with with homeschooling and yeah, and that really. Oh my gosh! I mean, we it. Childcare is just astronomical as well. You, you know, sort of, if you want people, if you need people to help when you're in show times or anything like that, it's, it's, it's so, it's, as you know, it, it's so tricky. Um, what, I've, what I've found is the 
best things that I've done recently have been so I did a play at the at the National Theatre a couple of years ago before the pandemic and it was in rep with another play so I had like one week on one week off two weeks on like that was a dream absolute dream and then right after the pandemic I did uh, I reopened the mousetrap in London but we did a job share I was, but we had two casts and one cast would do one week, the other cast would do the other week. And we did that for a few months. And that was that was just amazing, because as a parent, you know that, OK, you know, because some usually if I sign on for a job, I know that okay, it's going to be three months of six nights a week, not putting him to bed. And, and that's, you know, have to prepare him for that. And um and here it's like, oh, I'm only working this week and then I've got the whole next week off. And it, it was brilliant. So I I am such a, um, I was going to say an advocate, not that I've done much about it, but I, yeah. I would love to see more job share situations happening. Um, and I know it's not massively in the interest of, of the production companies, but... Well, the difference that would make to parents being able to stay and do what they've trained to do and you know not have to not have to stop doing what they love and go and do something that that they that they're not as invested in as well you know because most of us do what we want to do because we wanted to do it since we were kids weren't we and and that's such a beautiful thing and and I just think it's such a shame that lots of people are having to stop and and I can see, I can see why. And, you know, we certainly, I thought at one point about it. And my husband um, did 42nd Street. He's on my mug. Uh, when my husband did that, it was like he was offered this year's contract and it was really good money. And our son was like a year and a half. And he, uh, we were like, okay, let, let's do it. And at that point I thought, it's just, so difficult for us both to work at the same time and and I don't really want anyone else someone that I don't know bringing up my son putting him to bed every night so I, I don't want him to miss out on his parents doing that so I had that whole year off and <laughs> I'm being really honest I found it really really difficult not knowing that I wasn't going to be doing what I've done for the last 15 years, knowing that I wasn't doing that. And, and, you know, it's that same old thing of you want to be the best parent you can be. And, and I thought at that time that that's the best thing, I think, probably because my parents always said, you know, we must give up work when you have a baby and you must do that. And, and I was like, okay, that's what I should do. And, and it just didn't, doesn't sit anywhere in me to not have something to focus on and to work towards and be able to express myself. I've realized that I have to do that. I have to do that. Otherwise, I am not anywhere near what I should be as a person. And my son needs to see who I am and know who I am. And now that obviously I chose to go back and do it, you know, as long as it works out with him, I, you know, when he comes to watch me on stage or he, you know, yeah, I just think that's wonderful for him. And I can see that he, I can see how that opens his eyes to, to people doing something that they love or people expressing themselves in different ways. And, and that life isn't just about getting, getting that job and earning the money. It's, it can also be about doing the things you love. And I, and I think that's really important for him to see that. Yeah, uh, 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 150 million percent. And you say kind of the advocacy kind of coyly, but by living it, you are a role model. So everybody in the cast around you and to your students in seeing it, it, it's possible. And I think it, it's not, we're not saying it's easy but we're saying no. it absolutely is possible and hugely fulfilling and you you have a purpose through those talents and when they're not being used or 
you know idle in that you know then yeah in that way not that you're not that I'm suggesting Kate's idle at all I know she's not <laughs> but um when they're not being used in that way it's re it's very confusing yeah <laughs> you feel like you should be doing something else or it's kind of nagging at you but like, yeah. hey, there's a bottleneck and there's no avenue for, for it to go. And very well, also you're, you're, you're mixing with when you first have a baby, a lot of people who well for me anyway, yeah. who do not understand anything about what you do, you know, normal people, let's call them <laughs> lovely, beautiful, normal people who, who are not performers or, or, anything and, and I really struggled with that if I'm honest I've really struggled with going to baby groups yeah. and you know the next holiday being the thing that people are talking about or or the next baby or or the you know and I was I just couldn't relate to to a lot of the women that I met at all and i you know as performers we're very open and I, I could i can easily talk to people it's not an issue but yeah. i couldn't relate yes and I, I found that i found that really difficult and i think had i had i gone again and had another child i i definitely would have sought out like-minded women and you know Come to come to you guys and gone. I need to talk to people who were dancers. I need to talk to people who had, you know, who did this for a living. And how can I express myself, yeah. even though I know I can't be on stage right now? What can I do? What I, what can I just I just need to talk to people who understand. You know, I, I did find that hard. And and my mother is amazing and had four children and is the most amazing selfless person ever um lives in france and but i am so different to my mother not that i'm selfish i don't I, <laughs> i'm not saying that but she she you know had her first child at 25 or 24 and stopped her job and spent her whole life looking after her four children and and her, i spent a lot of I'd say the first three years of my son's life going why don't I want to do that why I wish I could be a mum that I just want to have lots of kids and look after them and I was trying to be that person but I'm just not that person I've 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 always had to achieve I've always had goals I've always needed to be physical I've needed to express myself I've needed to be at the top of my game and it's taken me a few years now to realize that that's okay yeah you know, that's who I am I am not mother nature who's going to have five kids and get and stop working I know I wouldn't be happy doing that but it's it's quite so I can't even really relate to my my own mum in that way, you know, or she can't relate to me. You know, I remember her saying to somebody once somebody because we're, we're all we all get on really well, me and my siblings, we're, where there's four of us and we, we adore each other. There's never been any trouble. There's never. And I remember we were at some family do and somebody said to my mum, how have you done it? How have you had all these lovely children that love each other? There's never any stories. There's nothing. <laughs> and I'm carrying my son about to start a play or a musical or something in a few weeks time and um <laughs> she said it's because i stopped work and i and i gave everything up for my children and i never i, I just stopped work and my job was looking looking after them and i remember being so heartbroken on hearing that and i thought i know that isn't in she's not said it in any way to upset me or anything but I remember thinking that I admire that so much but I can't do that yeah. and and that has really offended me <laughs> um obviously we spoke about it and she was like oh no but you're not the same type of thing you're a different person you had a career and that's you have a career and that's what you want and it was wonderful but I remember those words really affecting me and going, wow, am I doing the right thing? Should I have a career? Should I give it up? Is that what really I should do if I'm a mum? You know, I think a lot of people feel that, don't they? Absolutely.
absolutely. Um, but for all what your face lit up when you were talking about your son seeing you perform, and for mm -hmm. all of those reasons, that's why it's absolutely as valuable as your your mum's approach. And, and and like you say, it's reconciling that that you ha have a different approach, and and we do. And just say, I feel felt exactly the same with you, and sometimes still do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, which is, t again, totally why I thought, put this, I mean, originally it was an article, put those stories online. So if, if people aren't meeting somebody else who's a parent, they can at least read about it or see yeah. a bit of a blueprint or think, oh God, I'm not alone in this. But totally, over, particularly over the last year with Dance Mum Alive and having more um, support and investment, thank you, Arts Council England, but with all of the partners as well, being able to have more regular contact points for that group who are spread all over the UK and a little bit beyond, you know, across the pond in America and down in Australia, there's, there's that, you have got that connection with other people yeah. who completely get it and, and really help support you that, that you aren't on your own. And, and it's not just those artists who suffer by not being able to express themselves and do what they're trained to do from a very young age. The, the whole industry is suffering because there's so much knowledge and rich talent and uh, that is being completely lost yeah because it's not set up to 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 keep those people in the game so to speak and yeah and then that is starting to skew all of the choices in terms of what's presented and how it's presented where actually for audiences coming to see musical theatre and dance, which again is a high proportion of women, yeah, how reflective and uh, connecting is it with the, the the audience in terms of how those choices have affected what they actually see? Oh my um, gosh! I mean, I I would love to be able for young people, young to be able who are training as dancers or about to to actors, what whatever, are about to go into into an industry I would love them to have the feeling that they can have everything yeah because I think I think I never thought that until the point where I was like I want to have a child I was kind of like well it doesn't really go it doesn't really go with what I do yeah. and because you can't because it you just, especially you know 20 years ago it was it was not yeah and you didn't have a you to see no yeah exactly yeah so yeah it's not and for a lot of people, the concept of dance mum, I have to explain because they can't, you know, as a concept, it's like, oh, it doesn't, com doesn't compute. No. But as we continue to have more, it, it gathers and more people are able to be visible. Yeah. It, it's, it's funny. It doesn't operate in the same way as a, a minority group because actually there are loads of us. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. it's either hidden or people don't quite see it, or it's not given any attention that hopefully we're shouting about it, so that people yeah. are seeing that. But my gosh, it's just, it, it, it would be, it's needed, it's so needed, isn't it? And, and I, I think that some of, some of the things that I find in terms of when I look, if I get an offer of a job now, you know, the first thing I look at is, the schedule you know i'm about to do a play actually in it for in a uh in in a couple of months time and and i know there's no shows sunday monday tuesday so i'm like yes i've got three nights off with my son fantastic uh you know so for me that's like well that's a brilliant schedule for one yes i'm gonna do it you know and then the the other things i kind of ask now are is it a, can we have our schedule for the next day by six o'clock so I can plan my childcare for the next, you know. I mean, I, I had this, I had a bit of a, a thing about it a few years ago where, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm old enough to remember the time before your call for the next day was emailed to you, you know, you were in rehearsals and by the end of your rehearsal day, it was up on the board, you know, and it was like, you're in at 10 or you're whatever. And now, obviously, because of email, you know, you, you tend to get your call at like half 10 at night or 11. And I was like, I can't, I can't plan anything at, the, at that time. And at the, at the time, it was a good few years ago, but I remember them saying, well, you just should be available for the whole day. And, and that's that. Yeah, but it doesn't work like that 
when you're a parent. I'm not saying that I'm not going to be there. I'm just saying I know that you could get the call ready by the end of the day because that's how it always used to work. So if you could just bring that forward three hours, then that would really help me out because do you know what? Instead of booking childcare for a whole day that's going to cost me goodness knows how many hundreds. Your whole day's wage, basically. Yeah, a whole day's wage. I could cancel that afternoon and save myself 70 quid or save my, you know, it's like, you know. And, and hopefully, again, I know kind of systemically, Pippa are doing great things to try yeah. and, and flag these things up to, to, to educate those who don't, who don't have parents. But I, I feel as well, because there's a, ch a choice-ish element in starting a family, mm. it's a real challenge. Whereas if it's another need that, you know, then immediately if something's flagged, you know, perhaps, you know, we might need a ramp instead of stairs or something for access. Yeah. Because it's so visible and not a choice. Yes. Then it's seen to immediately. And I think, again, it's trying to make people aware. Yes, on the whole, probably a majority of people are choosing to have a family. Some people aren't, though. <laughs> and yeah. some people might not be starting a family in the cosy, lovely, you know, Clinton card way. You, you think that, you know, there could be a whole of other stuff going on and trying to make people a bit more open minded about it. But also having some respect for the role of bringing up the next generation. <laughs> yeah. That is really important. Yeah. But in a culture where the product and the art form is absolutely paramount and, you know, show must go on and everything else kind of um, is secondary is actually in this day and age, not at, not not as realistic. And, and hopefully we can move on a little bit from from that archaic point. Of view. Yeah. And, and you're right. You know, I think the industry loses a lot of fantastic people and, and talent and and I think as a, I would say this because I am a parent but I, uh, for me it's becoming a parent and having that experience has made me a better actor has made me you know it because it's brought out I'll tell you what for one it takes a lot of pressure off what I do on stage because I can't sit and focus on it on that and and make sure you know it's like well I have to do all my life things and I have to sort out my son and then in the time I have I'm going to learn my lines and I'm going to do that and I'm going to make sure I'm good but actually it stops almost an unhealthy obsession yeah. with being perfect on stage you kind of yeah. do what you can and usually for me anyway I'm better if I've got less time to sit and think about it yeah. so it has made auditioning much easier for not technically easier because obviously childcare and, and this and that yeah but i don't spend oh. days worrying about it because i ain't got time to do that <laughs> <laughs> and and i just think but i do i think it obviously it changes the way you you see life and for me it's massively helped my resource of tools as an actor and um yeah, in terms of what I need to draw on and all, all of that. And I just think that I just think that in, in our industry we we need we need everybody, don't we? We need everybody and, and and parents are part of that everybody. And if we're blocking them, you know, blocking them by making it such a tricky industry to stay in, then not really being fair, like you say, we're not really representing, are we? And and more poor for it. Um, I guess, have you got any sort of advice or wisdom for, for someone who's maybe considering starting a family? In this industry, yeah. Industry and, you know, any kind of... My, yeah, well, what I... Well, what I sort of tell my students and any any younger people I work with, because because you're right, I do feel now like like not 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 in a big headed way in any way, but but a lot of my students sort of say, well, how do you manage it? You know, you've got a you've got a marriage, you've got a child, you you and you still work and you teach and you and 
and then when I work with younger people and they know that you have children it, it's it's sort of quite uh, you know you get lots of questions and it's like how do you make it work and all this and what what I tend to say to people is is if we want it to get better we have to be vocal about it and we have to say and we have to ask so I said what I wish I'd have done when I was younger was was just when I got oh I better not like in like when I was pregnant in rehearsals and I didn't feel I could say because I thought they might be upset that I'd got myself pregnant just say you know just go hey this amazing things happened I'm pregnant how are we going to deal with this over this contract that's seven months you know how can we work together and make this good for me and my baby and, and good for the show and you guys it's everything is a conversation yeah. and I feel like especially as dancers we're so used to just getting on with it and taking all that responsibility and all that pressure and I can't upset the company or I can't you know they're going to think this or they, or they won't employ me again or this I would just say, you know, go with what you want to do. Don't worry. Don't try and fit that pregnancy in somewhere because it never works like that. <laughs> just carry on with your life as normal and try and get pregnant and then see it will happen and everything will fall into place. But don't be scared to ask, can I bring my baby to that to that thing? I'm still breastfeeding, so is it all right if somebody comes with me and in the breaks I pop out and I pump or I breastfeed? Can I do this? Can, can I do that? Because if it will never change otherwise. That's right. And a lot of the time these days I'm finding they're saying yes. You know, I, I, things, you know, costume fittings at the last minute. Oh, can you come in actually and do a costume fitting after rehearsal tomorrow? Well, I can, but... I'll have my son so I'll, I'll bring so what I do now is I'll be bringing my son I won't say oh I, I, I need to try and find childcare or I need to I'll go yes but I'll bring my son <laughs> yeah it's just the best advice and 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 what is brilliant is you're saying you know now we're getting more yeses um to to really help yeah. that feeling that empowerment and confidence and sort of going in isn't it with that energy of expecting <laughs> in some way that they will um be um adaptable and accommodating and then it's actually on them if they're not because they're exactly on a ride. because now because nowadays they'll be called out yes. if they're not that yeah. that's the difference with before is they could sort of dismiss you before but but now they can't so we have to use that as well we have Absolutely. I'm not ill just because I'm pregnant you know yeah completely Kate it's been absolutely so wonderful and inspiring to to talk to you and hear about your experiences and how you are advocating <laughs> and being a role model for for so so many of us and just I want to a great big thank you and keep looking out for for, for Kate in her her <coughs> next roles thank you very much I've loved it <laughs>